you guys going to be quiet? Shh. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Permission to Heal. I am Marcy Brockman, and I am thrilled that you are here. On today's very special episode, episode number 33, we have Tanya Clark. Tanya is a certified somatic exercise instructor. And if you're anything like me, you have no idea what that means. But she has gone through her own personal journey of years of chronic shoulder pain, which brought her to restorative movement education. She is a certified yoga instructor and has always been into fitness and exercise and movement and so on. And she discovered somatics as a way of helping herself and now her clients tune into their bodies and unravel their persistent tension and pain through gentle methodical movement. So she's a level two certified somatic exercise instructor, trained in yoga and fitness and Pilates and always experimenting with movement and has figured out that that somatics is a great way for all of us to live a long, happy life and feel comfortable and healthy in the skin that we're in. And in the episode, she talks to us a lot about what somatics is and what it isn't and how to actually do somatics and what it actually is. And so she walks us through a few exercises with our shoulders and our neck and our arms, our biceps, just so that we can have a taste about what somatics is. Uh, and I, I am hooked. I, I must say I have uh, all sorts of aches and pains and injuries and things. And if it healed the prositis in her shoulder that kept her from uh, all of the physical activities, truth be told, just living a pain-free life. And, and since she's been doing this, she has not had any recurrences in any of this. And somatic exercises can target all sides of the body and address common issues like lower back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, hip pain, sciatica, joint pain, TMJ, and many more chronic musculoskeletal pain conditions. Not easy to say, but pretty easy to do. Um, I'm not a, a, a physical fitness guru by any means and really need a, a good, easy entry point back into physical movement. And I think this is just the ticket. So um, if you go to move do, movedeeply.com, M-O-V-D-E-E-P-L-Y.com, and purchase one of her three programs, her three courses. They're all pre-recorded uh, videos with text and journals to walk you through everything. Um, she's got three different courses, a three-day course, a 30-day course, and a 90-day course. And if you use the code HEAL, H-E-A-L, uh, at checkout, you can save 15% between now and July 7th. So that's pretty great. I know I will be doing it myself. So um, take a listen to the podcast and here is our conversation with Tanya Clark. Be well. Okay, so welcome Tanya Clark. I'm so, so thrilled to have you here with us today. Thanks so much, Marcy. I'm really glad to be here. <laughs> how, um, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. Yeah, yeah, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. It's uh, We're winding down the end of the school year, so the oh, students yep. are gone and grades are finished and, you know, we're just closing out this year before we start prepping for next year and Mm -hmm. I am exhausted. <laughs> yeah, it must have been crazy here. <laughs> it was a, nut, a nutsy year. Oh, my God. So you are in Vancouver. I've never been to Vancouver. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, Vancouver, BC. Gorgeous. I've uh, grown up here. So, yeah, no, I'm pretty lucky to be with nature all the time. And... That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I, I did almost plan a trip to that part of Canada like 20 30 years ago, but I couldn't oh, yeah. afford the airfare. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> from New York, it was a bit expensive. Yeah. So uh, I had to put it off and never wound up getting back. But uh, oh, well, hopefully you make it sometime. Hopefully, <laughs> absolutely. Yes, it's, it's on the list of places to visit. It's an extensive list. 
Yeah, me too. <laughs> and New York's on mine as well. <laughs> there you go. If only we could teleport. Yeah. That would be totally fine, you know, or we had a TARDIS or something, you know. Totally. Yeah, I would love that. Or a Star Trek transporter, you know. I would love yeah. that. Have breakfast in Rome and dinner in Paris. Or you know, wouldn't whatever. that be amazing? <laughs> and you'd never have to pack because you could always just mm -hmm. go home and change and then go back out again. Uh, yep. Anyway, mm -hmm. let's fantasy. Let's start with our six quick questions and see sure. where we go from there. Are you ready? All right. Mm -hmm. uh, what six words would you use to describe yourself? Um, well, I would say um spontaneous um laughter i like to laugh a lot um fun adventurous how many is that four i think mm -hmm. and um optimistic and experimental excellent <laughs> i think you're the first person to choose experimental not that i'm <laughs> counting but i like that that's awesome <laughs> Number two, what's your favorite way to spend a day? Um, mostly just uh, if I can get out in nature, that's great. So some kind of hike or um, just being outside and with my husband and um, just having a nice sort of chill day going out, having maybe having some lunch or dinner and a drink and nice. experiencing some time together. <laughs> that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. I, I love live music outside. Mm, yes. Yeah, me too. I've kind I of think, forgotten what that's like. Now I know. Coming. I haven't <laughs> seen anything even remotely like that in a long time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I can't wait for that to come back. I've almost sort of forgotten so much about that, that like what I just told you about my ideal day is like what we've been doing during lockdown. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, just because it's safe during a pandemic doesn't mean it's verboten during the regular part of. Oh, life. for sure. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> there's so little that we were able to hold on to. Exactly. Yeah. During the pandemic, during the, 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 the big part of it, you know, yeah. the intense part of it that. Uh, yeah, it's 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 freaky being able to go out without a mask every now and mm -hmm. then now, you know, I, I almost feel naked, you know, a little yeah. too vulnerable. Like, it's going to take some getting used to for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we had such a heightened sense of fear and alarm and anxiety. And it's taking a long, I think, going to take a long time to sort of settle back down again. Yeah, and, I, and I don't know, like, what things we we won't be doing anymore or what mm -hmm. about social customs will have changed. Mm -hmm. like, well, like right now we're not handshaking. And that yeah. was like the tried and true thing. You know, you had the measure of a person by their <laughs> handshake kind of thing, you know, and now people are doing the little elbow tap, elbow. which is not the same. No, <laughs> but I don't really want to be touching other people's hands right now. No. <laughs> yeah. It'll be interesting. We'll for see sure. how all that settles back out. Mm hmm. <laughs> Let's go to number three. What's your favorite childhood memory? Um, it's probably going to a place called Savory Island. That's um, a few hours away from us here. And it's a beautiful um, sandy island. So the beaches look almost tropical. And we used to go there in the summers. And um, I think Savory just, Island? Yeah, Savory. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and it was we'd go with my cousins and aunts and uncles, and we I always loved riding the boat. Um, my uncle had a boat, so we would boat around the area there, and yeah, I think that's one of my fondest memories, probably. That's <laughs> awesome. I want to go to a place called Savory. That's great. <laughs> Let's try number four. What is your favorite meal? Uh, see, usually it's a summertime meal, so probably uh, salmon is a big thing here, so. I love having a uh, grilled salmon with some fresh local corn and some kind of salad with like the greens from our garden and that kind of thing. Mm. How do you prepare your salmon? Uh, usually just do um, like a kind of a mayo lemon herb sauce and um, kind of marinate that on top and then throw it on the barbecue for a few minutes. Sounds heavenly. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's heavenly, good. heavenly. <laughs> I'm in love with dill. I put dill on it. Oh, yeah. I love dill. <laughs> Perfect for that kind of meal. Mm -hmm. 
uh, let's try number five. What one piece of advice would you like to give your younger self? Hmm. Stop worrying about um, what is, hmm. That's tough. Like, because <laughs> there's so many things I would probably say, but probably just stop worrying about what uh, what's to come and worrying about the future and just stay in the in the present moment and um, just uh, don't let what other um, external forces are around you um, bring you down if if uh, times get a little harder. <laughs> That's good advice. That's good mm -hmm. advice. And I think that's sort of a hard, difficult thing to learn how to balance, you know, mindfulness mm -hmm. with preparing for the future. Yeah. You, know, you don't want to project too much and make yourself crazy and anxious about things that you have no control over yet. But at the same time, you don't want to just live for today and yeah. not plan for the future, you know, yeah. so for retirement or, you know, eat well so you're healthy or mm -hmm. finish school so you get a degree, you know, like there has to be some balance, some planning. I think it's yeah. something we learn how to balance over time. For sure. Yeah, I definitely used to sort of flip-flop between living in the moment and not worrying about it, but then I would realize that I hadn't thought about anything and that I'd it was this sort of hard balance for sure. But I, yeah, it's, I think, uh, something we definitely get better at after a while if we try to, you know, work on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. being mindful about that as well mm -hmm. all right number six we're almost done what is one thing you would most like to change about the world hmm. hard to narrow it down yeah um i mean the idealist in me always sort of wished for a world where we could focus less on constant growth and profit and more on um, just being and, and enjoying what life has, has to offer and, and not trying to push the limits all the time. Absolutely. I think mm -hmm. that's a, a great, a great thing to change. I, I think there's so much about our lives for hundreds of years that has been motivated by other people's quest for profit. Mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. We th and it's just turned into a cultural norm because we're used to it but the whole thing was ingrained in us years years centuries ago because somebody else wanted to make a buck yeah exactly or a peso or a pound yeah or whatever yeah it's been it's hard but you know we try to do what you can in your own life i guess and Absolutely. That's <laughs> yeah all you can do about anything mm -hmm, exactly <laughs> okay so let's take a step to into your past and since you said you grew up in Vancouver or in, you know in Canada tell mm -hmm. us about your childhood tell us about who Tanya was and <laughs> how she became to be who she is now um yeah uh, I uh I was always very sort of I guess artistic and into creative things and um I did a lot of different things like photography and drawing and painting and I also did dancing and um and just like experiencing life from that sort of visual tactile level um so I always thought I was going to be either an artist or um actually I was really into anthropology too so I wanted wow. to be an archaeologist for a while um but the female Indiana Jones. Yeah, I was pretty obsessed with that kind of stuff. Um, Hard to make a living doing that. Yeah, well, and same with an artist, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> Both sides can be hard. Um, so, yeah, I ended up, um, uh, by the time I got to university, I, I did try studying sociology, anthropology for a while and realized it wasn't what I wanted to do as my job or my work. So I I focused on art and uh, for many years since then I've been I was a graphic designer and visual artist and um, and I also worked uh, a lot of um, I guess side jobs because I was always just trying to 
create some kind of business sure. um, from a creative side and, and, you know, make a living doing my art. And um, so I was, you know, often had the side job or, or a job to support me while I, you know, tried to do that. And so I worked for a botanical garden for many years um, in education there. So I had that sort of other side of me that really um, enjoys, you know, nature and also just uh, creating um, programs and education. And nice. so uh, kind of a diverse background, I guess, but That's awesome. Um, yeah, so it wasn't until in the last, um, I guess, six or seven years that I started paying more attention to my passion for uh, wellness and, and exercise and movement. Mm -hmm. um, I was always a, into fitness and, and uh, working out and being active. Um, but I was always pretty fascinated with the body as well. And um, eventually I decided to take um, my yoga teacher training for 200 hour uh, training okay. back in 2015. And then that sort of pivoted, started pivoting my life. So I still was doing my art and, and um, working in education, but there was a shift starting to happen. So um, over the years I've been learning and training more. Um, but um, I was dealing with a pretty bad uh, shoulder injury and problem for years. Um, I had bursitis in my shoulders and Ouch. Uh, yeah, it makes it really hard to um, function when your body feels like that. It was sure. chronic pain over and over, like setting me back all the time. And Was there an accident though, or something that caused it? Um, I mean, years ago, I almost tore my rotator cuff. So I think that influenced my favoring of my shoulder on one side. And but also just years of desk work um, between graphic design and the education job. Sure. I, um, I was I had not great. I, I didn't have bad posture. No one ever said like, oh, if anything, most awful. people said they had, oh, you looks like you have great posture, but I had just enough rounding in my shoulders that when I did all my activities like yoga and uh, upper body exercise, um, I started compressing, I guess, too much into the bursa and that um, caused the inflammation, but it took me years to figure that out. So um, it wasn't until I came to somatic exercise that I started noticing that my symptoms were going away and um, I haven't had uh, since I first started learning somatics uh, a few years ago about four years ago now um, I haven't had any uh, bursitis flare-ups again wow. so and that started pretty quickly after I started doing it so within about a year of just practicing as a student mm -hmm. um, I realized I just really wanted to teach that so um, I trained to become a clinical somatics uh, instructor. And so now that's been my, my passion and my focus. What is, is to help somatics? People. Yeah, somatics is something that's not commonly known. It's, no. um, it's about... I feel like um, it has like a, a route to sleep, like some like yeah, so... insomnia or you know, like... <laughs> A little bit. Uh, well, soma means body in Greek. Um, ah, so, okay. Um, I had it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, soma is S-O-M-A and then ticks, somatics. Uh -huh. So it's um, basically a practice of observing uh, the motion of the body and um, tuning into the function on a, on a deep sort of... Um, personal sense like how is your body moving for you mm -hmm. um but it's also based in there, there's various um, types of somatic movement um some are a bit more intuitive and to do with um emotional trauma and that kind of thing and and expressing yourself physically to help get that out um and others are more um, clinical and, and anatomy focused and science based so okay. i'm in i'm in I'm trained in that side. Um, the science-based one. Yeah, um, just because I'm more, I'm very, I was always interested in anatomy and, and bi biomechanics and that kind of thing. So um, that made sense for me. And um, so it basically retrains your nervous system to uh, better control your muscles through really slow um, 
methodical movements. So, and they only take a few minutes and it's, it's a pretty fascinating practice. It's somatic exercise in general has been around for about 200 years. Okay. Um, but uh, this method I've been trained in is rooted in Hanna somatics by Tom, Thomas Hanna. Mm -hmm. And he uh, was um, developing it in the 70s and 80s. So it's a bit more modern, but he was um, trained by Feldenkrais, who is a, no a name that's quite known in, in the field. Uh, so a lot of um, kind of movement nerds are aware of of that name <laughs> but um heard of that movement. yeah <laughs> nice. um so yeah it's it's just a really uh, fantastic way to get back in tune with your body especially if you've been dealing with injury or just um generally don't like exercise or don't know how to get started um what is it, it really like? how, do, how does it um, compare with the yoga yeah so you're mostly um you can do it in a different a few ways but lying down is usually how you first learn it just to take gravity out of the equation and i like exercise um, when you lie down yeah it kind of just feels like you're having a nap <laughs> but you're moving a little you're Yay! moving really slowly exercise and yeah. napping. I'm good at that. <laughs> it almost feels like you're not doing anything at first but um the process of like a um once you learn the process of a clinical somatics practice you go from assessing your body to experiencing the exercises and um, reflecting on how the exercises are influencing you during and after. So you do an, a standing assessment for your, of your body before and after so you can actually start to feel the differences in your body. Uh -huh. And this Im improves your, um, your ability to sense your body. So uh, your proprioceptive abilities. Um, so yeah, lying down is the best way to get that uh, effect just because you're kind of lying down in what should be a better posture for your body and the muscles can relax more effectively. Right. But you can also do it seated and standing in different uh, versions. And so that makes it more accessible to maybe people who can't lie down. And... So, it, so it has the potential to heal injuries. Obviously, you said you had bursitis in your shoulder mm -hmm. and that went away. Yeah. Yeah, it helps to realign your body and um, just uh, get rid of that chronic tension that we all develop over time. So oh, yeah. um, by the time we hit our 40s, even our mid 30s, um, things start to feel tight or not working as well. And that's just a matter of um, maintenance. And it's not something that's generally taught to us. It's more about, you know, go do your run, do a bit of stretching um, and you know, do all these healthy things. But there's, until more recently, there hasn't really been a culture around restoring mm -hmm. in the true sense, because even something like yoga, um, unless it's restorative yoga, which I also teach, um, it's, uh, it's still using your muscles and it's not allowing them to completely release. So um, by oh, contracting- so I see what you're saying. Yeah, Mm -hmm. So by contracting, what the somatics does is contract your muscles and then slowly release them. And so by doing the slow, very slow release, um, your nervous system uh, is able to kind of repattern the movement of that muscle and go, oh, I don't have to grip this anymore. This is how it should, I, I, this is how it should feel. This is how I should move this muscle. I don't need to hang on to this anymore. It's a pretty interesting concept of your brain is always wanting to keep you moving as efficiently as possible. But by doing that, we end up in these tight positions of, you know, if we're always, uh, you know, sitting rounded forward, our front body, the abdominals are always a bit contracted. So um, the nervous system starts to think, oh, well, you want to be able to just do that easily. So we'll just keep it there. So then when you stand oh. up and go for a walk, you're slightly rounded forward without even really realizing it sure. or your hip flexors might be tight um, from sitting oh, at a right angle. Tight. Yeah. So um, that kind of thing, just it's, if you imagine, you know, elastic bands. Uh -huh. um, so you know how you have the thick elastic bands that don't stretch as easily. Sure. Uh, and then there's like the skinnier ones that stretch a lot more easily. 
Right. Um, so you're kind of going from the thick, tight one to the, the more easily stretched one. Okay. Um, but it's not involving stretching because when you stretch, uh, most of the time, you're with conventional stretching, you're really just temporarily elongating it and then it kind of snaps back into place. Right. Um, because you're not, um, the nervous that. system doesn't know that it doesn't have to be tight. So, um, yeah, our brains are kind of, we're like a computer, right? So when you're programming, like you're, you're programming your body constantly by all the activities you're doing. Um, so this is like refresh, hitting refresh <laughs> and, and uh, deprogramming a lot of that. So you can do all of, all of those things better uh, in the long run. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I, I, I've been spending an inordinately large amount of time on my computer, my laptop this year as a teacher and the podcast and mm -hmm. everything else. And I've developed what I'm the English teachers diagnosing as tendinitis in my elbow. Mm -hmm. So can something like that be somatically fixed? Or um, yeah, tendinitis is definitely something that can be um, any kind of physiological, biomechanical, physiological muscle musculoskeletal based problem um, can be repaired through somatics. It can take time, um, but um, once you have that sort of foundation of a practice down and doing it, you know, even just a, a couple days a week is enough. But when you're first working through stuff, yeah. it's usually best to do it a few minutes a day. Um, okay. And then after a few weeks, you know, you start feeling like, oh, okay, yeah, I can feel that things are getting better or I'm moving more easily or so once you sort of um, begin to feel those changes you can start to gauge sort of how often you need to practice and if things start feeling kind of eh, not so good again then you might want to do it more for a few days and and repair things but ideally if you're really you know good about doing it regularly you almost never encounter the problems as often as if you don't because you're, so, you're always in that state of refreshing or yeah or yeah it's like the tune up for your body instead like if you you wouldn't not tune up your car you would usually if you want the car to run you're gonna tune it right. up periodically yeah so the same thing goes for us oil change. Yeah. yeah yeah so yeah it's a super important part of movement and health that um you know i'm really i think most people are missing. I know, I know that just from talking to people over the years and my students and everything, it's, it's something that the light bulb kind of finally goes off when they try it. It's like, oh yeah, I can feel how this is different. I can feel that I can walk more easily. I can stand more easily. Um, so it's pretty cool. But, now, yeah. years ago, I remember my dad saying when I had trouble sleeping that his little technique was, you know, you're laying down, you're getting to a comfortable position and then you start at your toes and you like tighten mm. your toes and hold it and then release. And then mm -hmm. you like mentally go through each body part or muscle system all the way up your legs, all the way up your body and you're tensing and releasing. It was all, all like a, like an isometric kind of thing. How does that differ? Are you, instead um, of doing it once you're, you're kind of repeating I, I'm I'm trying to make sense of it yeah. without you, you know, giving a class <laughs> right now because no yeah. one can see you. <laughs> no, I, I love that um, that that I've done I've done that exercise before where you you tense and release and there are some similarities there. So um, basically, what somatics is uh, is a type of every exercise is a pendiculation, which is a word for. I love that um, word. Yeah, when is a word for when we uh, contract and release the muscles. So when you take your morning stretch, and you you know reach your arms up and tense all your muscles and then let go, that's appendiculation. So what what your dad Don't was saying there was yeah, it was uh, was that as basically a type of appendiculation, um, and you know cats and dogs do it all the time. You see them stretching like oh, yes. quite often. Uh, birds stretch their wings and uh, so it's a natural part of being a living animal <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. we it's just gotten it's not in our modern life anymore it's it's actually been deprogrammed from our instincts to do it um, the more we sit the more we don't do as much um, the more we sit so, the more we want to sit yeah and and 
yeah, the less we move, the less we actually want to move. And so, um, and then vice versa, the more you move, the more you want to move. So, uh, so what this does is try to bring that pendiculation back into your life. And so you have to be more conscious about it initially, but as you practice more somatics, you will start to crave some kind of movement. So you're, you're going to start naturally doing more of that stretching and moving and um so it's it's kind of bringing that 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 natural instinct uh into your your body so so yeah that's actually basically what you were doing with the <laughs> the squeezing and releasing but these are these exercises are designed around targeting all the different areas of the body um and going through a bit more of a slow version uh, where it, like sometimes you might tense and quickly release and that's still effective, but um, the slow release is where you're, the, the magic really happens, especially in the last like 10% of the motion. So, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so it's like, imagine, uh, for example, something you can do is um, just uh, sit up straight or stand up. Um, I'm gonna do your, it with you. Yeah, yeah, so sit up straight in your chair. Okay. And then um, usually it's easiest if you're just on the edge of your seat um, so you can plant your feet and then um, slowly shrug your shoulders all the way up to your ears. Try to keep your chin um, parallel with the floor and then uh, release as slow as possible. Like as if you were as like slow as molasses. <laughs> molasses and, and <laughs> Yeah, and just keep going. You might get a little bit of shaking. That's normal. And down too fast. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. Done already. <laughs> <laughs> so you should go to about a, at least a count of ten. So especially in that last little bit, it's sort of tempting to just let go, but mm -hmm. um, just sort of start to experiment with like how much room is left, and and um, and that okay, that should help release. Yeah. So what you're doing in that particular exercise is releasing uh, the upper trapezius muscles. So that's the top part of the large triangular group of muscles on your back. Mm -hmm. and, and those get really tight a lot of the time just from oh, sitting yeah. at your desk. So, so just doing that and releasing as slow as possible um, is, is going to help to start reset, resetting those muscles. Um, so I like to do that one as, a, as an option just to sort of see how it feels. But it can That's take, good. yeah, it can take a couple, usually I say about three repetitions of, of most exercises is the best uh, sort of. Amount. It already feels better. I did it four times. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool, right? <laughs> wow. Now fix my elbow. <laughs> <laughs> elbow is a bit more related to, I yeah. I don't even know what muscle we're talking about here. Yeah, with the arms, they're a little harder to, sort of target specifically, but just by doing um, other exercises like that target, you know, your shoulders and your, your chest and your uh, upper back, and that'll start to help, you know, realigning that up upper body and mm -hmm. it can just reduce tension all the way down. So, but basically any kind of movement can be appendiculation. You can um, let's say if it's your bicep, you can just create resistance by holding your forearm up into like a, like as if you're doing a bicep curl sure. and, and, resisting and then yourself. And resisting yourself as you slowly push your arm back down and then, um, and then you have to completely relax at the bottom. So that's the other key point about all these exercises is, the, is completely relaxing before you move on to the next repetition because that's kind of the, that's the final reset button is the, the relaxation of the muscle. Mm -hmm. So the, the bicep one's a little hard to explain. Um, yeah, I feel it, like but, I'm engaging uh, the muscle too much. Yeah, so that's engaging it. Yeah, you gotta kind of find a happy medium about 60% um, of your full strength. Right, um, so I'm resisting, and... but I'm not like, yeah trying to force myself no no right okay yeah and then another one um so some of the exercises are just you uh like like with the shrug shoulder one you're slowly letting that just go whereas other pendiculations can be creating that resistance so uh, you can you know do it on your jaw where you put your you can put your fingers between your kind of halfway down your jawline uh-huh um, and then resist 
your fingers as they push into your jaw and start slowly looking to one side as you resist. And again, like not super powerful, just, just a, a mild pushing and you'll start to feel your neck muscles activate. Uh -huh. And then you can switch sides and go the other way. And what am I doing to, to release though? So, so I now you're... Trying... You're activating your neck muscles um, on either side. You should feel the ones that connect down into your collarbone. Yeah. Yeah. So by activating those by pressing um, and releasing and, then and switching to the sides. Release, am I releasing my fingers or yep. am I turning my neck back to neutral? Uh, you're releasing your fingers and then switching sides and going the other way. And usually I go back and forth about ah. three times. Okay. And then after a few reps of that, then you should feel some release through your neck muscles. So that's using the resistance factor. And then there's the other ways where you actually just slowly move your, your limbs. Interesting. Um, yeah. So, but the main principle behind it is, is the contraction and the full release. And so all of this is really for soft tissue, muscles, tendons, ligaments, yes. things like that. It's not, it's not going to help me fix the broken ankle I'm walking around with now. No, but it, it can take the stress off of it, potentially. If you have an injury, there's usually a lot of um, contraction and compression of muscles to compensate. Right. Or even, even, if you, even if that injury is gone, um, there's a history of having to compensate. So There's some uh, biological trauma residual in there. Yeah, yeah, so we end up asymmetrical and um, you know, our hip can hurt because of an injury on one side. Oh, yeah. um, where, where we were favoring, you know, like if we had a sprained ankle or whatever. Um, so somatics is a pretty ideal way to balance that out as well. And so by reducing reducing tension of the muscles, um, you're reducing compression of the joints. So it can help with arthritis as well and help ease the pain. Um, it's not necessarily like it can't really reverse arthritis, but it can sure. definitely um, ease any kind of um, pain that comes with the joint compression and that kind of thing. And it seems to mm -hmm. me that it's pretty gentle and that anybody mm -hmm. could do it. It doesn't, you don't yeah. have to have any specific fitness level. So it's perfect for us couch potatoes who have been doing <laughs> next to nothing throughout the pandemic and want to slowly get back into figuring out what our bodies need. It's yeah. probably a good entry point as yeah, well exactly. as maintenance point. You know? Yeah, it really is. Um, it's, it's, it's great for just helping you sort of enjoy the feel the feeling of movement again. And, and also just for, because it, it increases your muscle control and your body sense, uh, it just makes everything else you do easier. So when you start getting into other fitness, if you know, you say you want to do get into weightlifting or, or just start hiking more or whatever, um, it's just going to make that all easier because your muscles are in their full optimal setting and uh, you have more mobility and, um, and it's just sort of, you start to really notice it if you compare before and after, but, uh, and so you might, you know, take it for granted if, <laughs> if you're doing this and then it feels like, um, you know, everything feels good. Then if you stop doing somatics, you'll start to, You'll notice that yeah. things are getting a bit tight again so um yeah like in our uh, we way back in the olden times like you know <laughs> let's say like prehistoric primal times you know we were moving in different ways all the time mm -hmm. and and stretching and like just doing it all was, just came naturally but we, we just don't have this anymore where you're sitting yeah. <laughs> eight hours at a desk right yeah so. so there wasn't a need for this kind of thing but now there there really is and uh, this is like that missing link that uh, I, I call it the missing link in the in the fitness regime, basically, where, um, you know, it's the thing that's going to make everything even better in all ways. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd imagine that that children are are probably moving their bodies a lot more intuitively than grownups. Yeah, I imagine for sure. This is something we sort of talk ourselves into or out of depending on your perspective as we age so mm -hmm. would this be something that might be a good thing to teach kids to do so that they grow up doing this and maybe can circumvent some of the tightness or injuries or um, body misalignment or whatever that that we are dealing with now would it make sense to teach kids or an adolescents to do this 
Yeah, I, I've thought a lot about this. I feel that the physical education programs in most schools is yeah. pretty old school. <laughs> they just a... <laughs> teach you how to do sports. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not very um, practical for most people. And, um, and yeah, a lot of the truth is most kids, by the time they're teenagers, are having to park their butts in desks all the time. And yeah. that's when it starts. So, um, so yeah, absolutely, I think. Um, there's huge value in kids learning um, this type of movement um, but by the time they're you know a teenager because um, you know I watch my nieces and nephews and I can see the younger ones they're still just playing and running around and whatever and then you know my oldest who uh, nephew is a hockey player and I can already see his body is taking this form of the hockey player and it's I know it's gonna hurt him later so sure. part of me wants to be like so can I teach you some stuff to keep you you know so I'm probably gonna you know I'm gonna try to teach him the next time I, I see him because I think he'll value it as if he understands the absolutely uh, yeah so I think also from the sports side yeah like just teaching these kids who are into sports that this is how they're gonna keep doing it without with less injury with more perf better performance and that kind of thing so um, yeah, it's, it's something I, I hope in the future I'll be able to maybe, you know, talk to my local school board and try to propose these types of things. Yeah, and, create a school know, program. Be a bit of a change maker. The country. <laughs> yeah. 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 Pioneer think, a new thing. You know, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. I wish my daughter knew stuff about this. She ran track for uh, middle school straight through the high school so for five years she was running track she was a sprinter mm. and and her knees suck she's oh, 20 yeah. years old and she has knee pain chronically Ouch. yeah and she's very fit and goes to the gym her legs are very strong mm. and she can't like squat lift anymore right. you yeah. know she can't like she bends down and wants to pick something up you know you're supposed to bend with your knees she can't get back up Oh, no. And yeah. she's 20, you know? Wow, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's hard on your body. But yeah, this could absolutely help her start just feeling a little more like freedom in that area of her body over time. I think it's the kind of thing where, you know, if there's, you know, joint damage, um, it's pretty hard to recover that. But right. it's definitely something that, you know, by doing these exercises before you work out, mm -hmm. um, it can really help to unlock um, you know, some of the things that are going to restrict motion with, with exercises that, you know, we might find challenging or, uh, and just start to rebuild more. Sure. Um, yeah, I tend to do a bit of somatics before and after my workouts now, and it, it's a total game changer. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So how do people work with you? I mean, you're in Canada. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I hope that you have, um, virtual <laughs> i do yeah it's <laughs> teaching uh, and so on you know i don't live in vancouver so yeah um so how do we how do we work with tanya um yeah i mean online is my focus because i feel like the world needs to know this and mm -hmm. the best way to share it is through the internet so um i have I, i've created a few different tiers of programs to help people kind of go through a, path, a journey okay. so I have um, my newest offering is called the three essentials and it's um, a three-day or three-part program that can be done within three days but you can do as long as you need to but that's sort of the recommended amount of time um, that walks you through three essential somatic exercises that target um, the most commonly tight areas of the body, which is the neck, shoulders, and back. Uh, okay. Most people have problems in that area at first. And also, when you start with somatics, you want to start from releasing the core. So um, this, this course walks you through um, releasing those key muscles in your core uh, so that you can then start to work on other areas of your body. So, um, so that's the first sort of entry level um, course. And, um, and then I've got uh, Discover Somatics in 30 Days, which guides you through um, a sort of drip uh, curriculum where you get a few video, everything is uh, like pre-recorded video classes where okay. you can do it and do it in your own time. 
and um, there's written material to learn more about the exercises and um, and a bit of an accountability kind of helping you out with scheduling and just staying on task with um, email reminders and I've got like a little journal that you can use to track your progress and oh I love uh, that yeah like a big part of it, it about gaining the best benefits from this practice is to get an understanding of what's changing your body. So I've created a system, uh, both in the three essentials, just there's like an intro to that concept. Mm -hmm. And then in the 30 day program, you really get in there and um, start to track and um, become more aware of what's happening in your body with all the exercises. And uh, the exercises you learn in that 30 day program will pretty much target all sides of your body and and um, start to get you to a point where you're feeling much more um, balanced. So, um, and that one again is uh, designed to be done within four weeks, but um, they're all available for as long as you want. So, you know, life so happens. So you can just keep redoing it and yeah. focus on the ones that you like or that feel good or whatever. Yeah, so it's it's designed to be done in a certain order. And then after that, you can go back and you know, review what you want. And, uh, and then my uh, larger program is um, a 90 day program, because it takes uh, statistically um, about 90 days to really get a habit in right. your life. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I chose the 90 days. And I walk my uh, students through um, learning somatics um, through pre recorded content, so similar to the Discover 30 Days program, but then expanding upon it and also bringing in restorative yoga as a complement to the practice, um, which actually in the three essentials, I introduced that a little bit as well. So it kind of, the three essentials program gives you a taste of sort of a bit of what you'd get in the big program uh, with the restorative yoga and the somatics and, and then what you do with the somatics. Uh, but then there's also weekly group classes um, through Zoom and um, a month, one private class per month with me um, for three months and, um, and then access to an online platform where you can um, do all the pre-recorded stuff. And That's so, cool. yeah, it's a more of a kind of group coaching one-on-one -on -one, um, experience with the 90 days. So that's for, you know, if you're really feeling like you want to, just kind of get there and, and make it part of your life. Cause, um, cause that's, I mean, essentially where the real change happens is by sure. doing it for a few months and it can be hard to do that on your own. So. Yeah. Um, I usually I'm good for a couple of weeks and then I, yeah. life gets away <laughs> and I crap out and I stop doing it. Yeah. So this is really, <laughs> that's my MO with everything. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's normal. Like we all, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's why I created this format is cause I know that, uh, you know, people I talked to really had trouble with uh, accountability and also having enough time. So um, everything is designed to be able to be done in 30 minutes or less. And, um, and also just teaching you how to um, understand the exercises as a level where you can lie down for 15, 20 minutes and mm -hmm. uh, be like, okay, today I feel like my shoulders and lower back are tight. So you do, um, you know, arch and flat and back lift and the, the few exercises you do, to do, the, do those yeah you're done in 20 minutes and you're feeling way better and um Sounds so yeah fabulous tanya <laughs> <laughs> so this is at movedeeply.com we can find yeah. all of this yeah my company is move deeply wellness so movedeeply.com is um yeah your portal to finding those programs so right now i'm featuring the three essentials um so you'll find a link right on the front page for that Nice. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. And you mm -hmm. said something at some point about a coupon for permission to heal listeners. Yeah. Um, so if you use the coupon code heal, okay. um, you can get 15% uh, off of any program. Cool. Okay. So we'll use the coupon code heal at movedeeply.com for 15% off th now through July 7th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so the, uh, yeah, the coupon will expire on July 7th. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. Thank you. Um, Hear that, listeners? You can save 15% <laughs> off. That's very mm -hmm. exciting. 
That's very exciting. I think yeah. there's something in this for everybody. Yeah, and there's it's a range of budgets to use. So my, my entry level course is only uh, twenty nine dollars Canadian. So it's a I tried I to make it a can that. <laughs> yeah. I tried awesome. to make it a no brainer to start because <laughs> because right. uh, yeah, people got to try this. It's it's definitely gonna change your life. <laughs> well, I think that's fabulous. <laughs> we'll heal our bodies and and relax our minds and make ourselves feel better about being in the skin that we're in. Hey, there's a poem in there. Um, <laughs> that's wonderful. Yay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. <laughs> this is fabulous. So Tanya mm. Clark, movedeeply.com. Um, everything's going to be linked in the show notes. So if you are watching on YouTube or you're wa wherever you're listening, just scroll down and you'll have everything there. And, um, will all be nice easy to to get at links and including links to all her socials and so on so mm -hmm. you'll always be able to find tanya clark <laughs> yeah thanks um i've also got a quiz uh on my site if anyone's interested in doing I that love quizzes yeah. what are we quizzing it's um called uh discover your posture personality so um somatic uh somatics has this principle behind it of um, our posture is affected by different reflexes. So um, our personality can actually affect that. So if you're more of a type A person, you can have a certain type of posture, huh. uh, which creates uh, certain lines of tension in your body. Or if you're more introverted, you can also have a different type of posture that can affect pain in other ways. So this quiz takes you through a few, a few quick questions to sort of get a sense of where you might be there and, um, and some suggestions on uh, and what might be influencing your body so and how to wow. help it. and and knowing that can help you fine tune your somatic practice to yeah help maintain a pain-free body so to yes speak. yeah yeah the more you learn about your own habits and um and your your movement and your movement habits and your postural imbalances uh, the better you can work with the practice that's fabulous so, yeah <laughs> Yay! Well, thank you so much for being here, Tanya. This was wonderful. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, definitely helped me. I already feel better just doing that shoulder thing. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Fabulous. Thanks so much, Tanya. Yes, thank you so much, Marcy. <laughs>